ഹായ് എവറി വൺ ഈ ഒരു വീഡിയോയിൽ നമ്മൾ ഡിസ്കസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പോകുന്നത് എൻ ഡി എ യു ജി സിനെ ഡിസംബർ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ട്വൻറ്റി ജൂൺ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ട്വൻറ്റി വൺ സൈക്കിൾസിലെ ആഫ്റ്റർനൂൺ ഷിഫ്റ്റിലെ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസും അതിൻ്റെ പ്രൊവിൻഷ്യൽ ആൻസേഴ്സിനെ കുറിച്ചുമാണ് നമ്മളിതിൻ്റെ മുന്നേ ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള വീഡിയോയിൽ നമ്മളിതിൻ്റെ മോർണിംഗ് ഷിഫ്റ്റ് ഈ എക്സാമിൻ്റെ തന്നെ മോർണിംഗ് ഷിഫ്റ്റിലെ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് നമ്മൾ ഡിസ്ക്രൈ ഡിസ്കസ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു സോ ഈ ഒരു വീഡിയോയിൽ നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യാൻ പോകുന്നത് ഈ ആഫ്റ്റർനൂൺ ഷിഫ്റ്റിൽ ചോദിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസും അതിൻ്റെ ആൻസേഴ്സും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ അത് ഏത് ബ്രാഞ്ചിൽ നിന്നാണെന്നുള്ളതിനെ കുറിച്ചുമാണ് ആൻഡ് നമ്മൾ ഈ ഒരു എക്സാം ജനറൽ ആയിട്ട് എടുക്കുവാണെങ്കിൽ മോർണിംഗ് ഷിഫ്റ്റ് പോലെ തന്നെ ക്രോണോളജിക്കൽ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഷോർട്ട് സ്റ്റോറീസ് നോൺ ഫിക്ഷൻ അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഏരിയാസിൽ നിന്നാണ് കൂടുതലായിട്ടും ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് ഏറ്റവും കൂടുതൽ വന്നിട്ടുള്ളത് ആൻഡ് നമ്മൾ നെറ്റിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് പ്രിപ്പയർ ചെയ്യുമ്പം എസ്പെഷ്യലി ഇംഗ്ലീഷിൽ നെറ്റിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ പ്രിപ്പയർ ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴത്തേക്കും യു ഹാവ് ടു സ്റ്റഡി എവറിത്തിങ് ഇൻ ക്രോണോളജി നമുക്കൊരു ലിറ്റററി സെൻസ് വേണ്ടത് വളരെ അത്യാവശ്യമാണ് സോ ഹാവ് ദിസ് ഇൻ യുവർ മൈൻഡ് നമ്മൾ ഏതൊരു ഇപ്പോൾ ബ്രിട്ടീഷ് ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ആയാലും അമേരിക്കൻ ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ആയാലും ഇന്ത്യൻ ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ആയാലും ഈവൻ ഫെമിനിസ്റ്റ് വർക്സിൽ നിന്ന് വരെ ക്രോണോളജിക്കൽ ഓർഡറിൽ റീഅറേഞ്ച് ചെയ്യാനും അറേഞ്ച് ചെയ്യാനും ചോദിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് സോ ആ ഒരു ഓറിയൻറ്റേഷനിലായിരിക്കണം നമ്മൾ ഇതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് പ്രിപ്പയർ ചെയ്യുന്നത് So let's look at the first question. Who wrote the essay, My First Acquaintance with Poet? So we all know it's a very easy question, a very direct question. So my first acquaintance with Poet is written by William Hazlitt. So we know about William Hazlitt. This is a question from Romantic Age. But if we look at the new syllabus, it's actually a question from the non-fiction work. It's an essay written by William Hazlitt, My First Acquaintance with Poet. So the correct answer is option D, William Hazlitt. Question number 2 In his recasting the canon of English poetry in new bearings in English poetry which of the following pairs was downgraded by F.R. Lewis So we know about F.R. Lewis this is a question that's asked from literary theory because F.R. Lewis is a new critic and this question is regarding the works in the regarding the essays that he had written So the question is uh, in the, in his recasting the canon of English poetry new bearings in English poetry which of the following pairs which of the following writers was degraded by F.R. Lewis Browning and Arnold Milton and Shelley Pound and Hopkins Tennyson and Swinburne So here the correct answer is option B Milton and Shelley So in this work you can find that F.R. Lewis downgrades Milton and Shelley So the correct answer is option B Milton and Shelley Now coming to the next question which of the following terms is used to describe spurious words which are the result of inadvertent errors made by copyists printers and editors so this actually belongs to one of the language questions and uh, here in this exam even though nta has moved their literary device module from the syllabus you can you you have to face uh, certain questions that were asked from literary device or we can say out of syllabus so here the question is uh, is like one of the examples of the language questions and the correct answer to this question is ghost words okay that is option b ghost words because that is what is called as the words which are the result of the errors caused by the publishers like the copyist or the printers and the editors so the correct answer is option b ghost words Moving to the next question what term did Bertolt Brecht use for his mode of drama writing to distinguish it from traditional theater okay so the term used by Bertolt Brecht to uh, to the theater that he performed or the to, to the theater that he created and we all know that Bertolt Brecht these are all some direct questions we all know that Bertolt Brecht he is directly uh, connected with the epic theater so the correct answer is option A 
that is epic theater and we know about Bertolt Brecht uh, this actually belongs to European literature because Bertolt, Bertolt Brecht is a German writer and we all know about epic theater also because we we have to expect many questions from epic theater we actually faced many questions from Bertolt Brecht in the previous year questions so the correct answer is option A epic theater Moving on to the next question, which of these may be said to be true of the journal published from Bowling Green University from 1969, which carried essays on Spider-Man comics, rock music and detective films. Okay, so this is actually a question that's asked from the non-fiction uh, module because it's from a journal and the correct answer here you can find that the options given are it's so to highlight the importance of popular culture. It's so to highlight the importance of elite culture. It's so to um, buttress the canon by making it more elitist. It's so to break down the dominance of high culture. So we know that the correct answer here option B and C are wrong. And here the correct answers are option A and D. Okay, so uh, it carried essays on Spider-Man comics, rock music and detective films. It is true because it's so to highlight the importance of popular culture and break down the dominance of the high culture. So the correct answers are option A and D. Let's check the options A and D comes as option B. So the the correct answer is option B. Now moving to the next question, who is the author of the typology of detective fiction? Who is the author of the typology of detective fiction? The options are G.K. Chesterton, uh, Sweeten Todorov, Umberto Eco and Vladimir Prop. So the correct answer is Todorov. So uh, Todorov, he is a French writer. So this belongs to this European literature. So the correct answer is option B that is Todorov. Now moving to question number 7, arrange in the right sequence the following stages of a child's first language acquisition. Arrange in the correct uh, right sequence the following stages of a child's first language acquisition. Holophrastic, babbling, telegraphic speech and cooing. So this actually belongs to English language teaching. You have to know about this language acquisition and the different modes, the different stages in ELT. So this actually belongs to language and pedagogy as per the new syllabus. So here you have to, you have to arrange the right stage in which a child um, has this language acquisition uh, power. So here the correct, let's if you look at the correct options or if we, uh, if we have to arrange it, let's say that the first, the first thing or the first stage that a child passed through is cooing. Okay, so the first one is cooing, cooing followed by babbling, cooing which is followed by babbling, followed by holophrastic and finally by telegraphic speech. So cooing, babbling, holophrastic and telegraphic speech. So if you look at the options, it will be D, B, A and C and D, B, A and C comes as option D. Okay, so that these are the right stages of language acquisition of a child. Question number 8. Which of the following are novels by David Loach? Okay, you have to identify the novels written by David Loach. You might be very familiar with David Loach because he was twice shortlisted for Booker Prize. He was a postmodern writer. And here you have given several novels uh, of different writers and you have to identify the three novels written by David Loach. So we have... The British Museum is Falling Down, which is a novel written by David Lodge. Then uh, we have The Seven Sisters, which is not. Then we have Changing Places, uh, which is again a novel written by David Lodge. Then Nice Work, another novel written by David Lodge. Empire of the Sun, not by David Lodge. So these are the correct answers. Option A, Option uh, C uh, and Option D. So these are the correct answer. Option A, C and D comes as option answer B. So the right answer is op uh, answer B. That is the, uh, the novels written by David Lodge, the postmodern writer. Now question number 9. Which of the following terms describes a novel of fashionable high life in 19th century English literature? Okay, so here you have to identify the 
terms in which a no the term that we used to call a novel because we know about the 19th century for the late romantic age and the early victorian age the focus of the novels were much about the society the class differences between the different society for example in wuthering heights you can find about these class differences or in pride and prejudice of the romantic age you can find you can find about the uh, sophisticated behavior of the upper class people and also about the concepts of the middle class people so here you have to identify what is the name used to describe the fashionable high life novels of the 19th century english literature the correct answer is silver frog okay so that's the correct answer silver folk okay so answer d silver folk now question number 10 which two of the following are works by i a richards which two of the following are works by i a richards i a richards again falls under new criticism so this is a question from literary theory and you have to identify the works written by him concepts of criticism science and poetry the philosophy of rhetoric english literature in our time and the university so we know that i a richards his main works are science and poetry and the philosophy of rhetoric you might be very familiar with philosophy of rhetoric because he has explained many concepts in philosophy of rhetoric and his other work is science and poetry so the correct answer is option uh, b and c and that comes as option number c Okay so the correct answer is answer C Now question number 11 which of the following statements are true of english as used in india which of the following statements are true of english as used in india so this is actually a question from english in india so we know it's a new syllabus added by ntn in, in from december 2018 so from that you can expect almost uh, i mean a minimum number of four questions from english in india so here also this is the first question asked from english in india so you have to identify the correct statements india is counted among the largest english speaking communities in the world that's a right statement no group uh, community or uh, population of indians claim english as its mother tongue that's wrong more than 50% of indians speak english fluently that's also a wrong statement english is the country's principal language of commerce that's a right statement with the growing stature of hindi as a lingua franca it has it has supplanted english as the link language between the central government and the states that's also a false statement so the correct answers are option a that is india is counted among the largest english speaking communities in the world and option d english is the country's principal language of commerce so the correct answers are option a and d and that comes as answer a that comes as option a so the correct answer is option a now moving to question number 12 which of these countries does montaigne's essay of cannibals focus on primarily so this is a post colonial essay which becomes under post colonial literature so here which of these countries does montaigne's essay of cannibals focus on primarily borneo brazil india and japan so of cannibals it is basically based on or is primarily based on brazil so the correct answer is option b that is brazil which of the following is a dead language again another language based questions where you have to have a general idea about the language and also about the history of british literature you will get some sort of idea regarding this uh, i mean idea regarding this answer so uh, cantonese frisian gothic and yiddish so the correct answer is option c gothic you may be familiar with gothic novels okay so the answer is option c that is gothic Now question number 14 two of the following poems are by judith wright which of the two for which of the two following poems are written by judith wright so we know about judith wright she is an australian poet a feminist writer and you have to identify the poems written by her so we have meditation on a bone which is not a poem written by her imperial adam no women to man that's a poem written by judith wright the all present that's another poem written by judith wright so the correct options are c and d c and d comes as option d so the correct answer to this question is option d now the next question is a match the following question where you would be asked from different units different modules and uh, in order for this to answer it you have to have an idea about the about 
a particular topic as a whole that's why i said you have to study everything as a whole apart from random randomly picking up stuff so here the question is um, I mean, uh, almost all the, uh, all the writers are Indian, but the questions, I mean, the essays or the texts given here are post-colonial, belong to the post-colonial theory. So here, the uh, you have to match the following work. So we have the lie of the land, mask of conquest, rethinking English, the gifts of in, or English. Then we have the authors like Alak Mukherjee, Rajeshwari, Sundar Rajan, Gauri Vishwanathan and Swadi Joshi. So one of the very uh, common and I mean, most of you might have known that Mask of Conquest is written by Gauri Vishwana. That's a very uh, common question. It has been asked for several times. And if we look at the other works, we can say that um, the life of the lie of the land. The lie of the land is written by Rajeshwari Sundar Rajan. The lie of the land is written by Rajeshwari Sundar Rajan. Then we have the Mask of the Conquest written by Gauri Vishwanathan. Rethinking English written by Swadi Joshi and this gift of English written by Alak Mukherjee. Okay, so A written by 2, B written by 3, C written by D and 4 and D written by 1. Okay, and if we look at the options, we get A2, B3, C4 and D1. That comes as option B. So, the right answer is option B. So, all these works are post-colonial works. Now, coming to 16th question, who among the following is associated with a philosophy of praxis? Okay, so Antonio Gramsci, George Lukoc, Raymond Williams and Stuart Hall. So, Antonio Gramsci, uh, George Lukoc and Raymond Williams and Stuart Hall. So, which of the following are associated with philosophy of praxis? So, here the correct answer is Antonio Gramsci and we know about Antonio Gramsci he is a Marxist theorist and a philosopher and he is normally um, associated with uh, ideology and uh, other heterology homology etc. So here you can find that the correct answer he is also associated with the philosophy of praxis written by Anto uh, philosophy of praxis and is associated with Antonio Gramsci. So the correct answer is option A. So, question number 17, this is a question that is asked from research methodology where you have to have an idea about the documentation style as per MLA 8th format because that is considered to be the standard as per the new thing. So, here which two of the following confirm to the documentation style prescribed by the 8th edition of the MLA book. So, here the correct answers are we know option A is wrong. Option B is right. Kincaid Jamaica in History, Kalalo, Volume 24, Number 2, Spring 2001 and Papers. Now, uh, Option C, Nunberg Jeffrey, Editor, The Future of the Book, U of California, P1996, that's also right. So, B and C are right and again, Option D is wrong. So, the correct answer would be Option B and C that comes as answer C. Now, moving to the next question, who among the following has coined the term ecofeminism? So, ecofeminism, it comes under the feminist theory of literary theory. So, here the options are Montiguetic, Francois de Yon, Helen Sixes and Margaret Dura. So, the correct answer is ecofeminism, the term was coined by Francois de Yonborg. Okay, so that's the correct answer. Option B, Francois de Yonborg. Now moving to the next question, which of the following did Ovir Anuba, Tabantu Leong and Gugi Wationgo object to in 1968? Okay, so here the question are, which of the following did Ovir Anuba, Taban Loi Leong and Gugi Wationgo object to 1968? So they all comes under post-colonial literature and they have uh, written essays and if you look at the works of Gugi Wationgo, he's familiar because of his works like The Grain of Wheat, which is a very famous work regarding post-colonialism. So here you have to identify what they really objected in their works and in their essays. So the options are the primacy of English literatures and culture. That's a right statement because that is one thing that they always objected. The second one is the centrality of Africa in the department of English. 
the primacy of orator in the syllabus both of them are wrong that's what not they objected option d the focus on the study of the historic continuity of english literature that is also a right statement so the correct options are option a and option b so these two are what they objected the primacy of english literature and its culture and the study of the historic continuity of english literature so the correct answer is option a and d and that comes as and that comes as option a so the correct answer is answer option a now again another match the following question and here again this question is from indian english literature so they have given the names of the novels and you have to identify the authors english august in custody such a long journey and funny boy so in funny boy this was also a question in the in the morning shift shift then sham selvadure anida deshai rohinton mystery and ubamanyu chatterjee so these are the correct thing so let's look at the option so english august english august this is a work written by ubamanyu chatterjee english august is written by ubamanyu chatterjee in custody it is written by anida deshai such a long journey by rohinton mystery funny boy by sham selvadure so the correct answer is option d that is a4 b2 c3 and d1 which comes as answer d okay so the correct answer is answer d that is option d now question number 21 arrange the following journals in the chronological order of publication so uh, ever since nta has taken uh, care of the questions you can find that there was numerous questions from the magazines the journals the research books etc so here also in the previous exams in the 2020 or 2019 exams you can find several questions from the magazines like or the journals like the spectator the tatler the review and even in the morning shift you you got almost two questions directly from the magazine so uh, have this in your mind while you are doing while you are preparing yourself uh, take care of these uh, magazines related which are related to all the ages of uh, of english literature so you have to identify the journals in the chronological order of publication so um, london's magazine con hill magazine blackwoods magazine and benley's miscellany so the correct order would be the first one to be published among here is the blackwoods magazine okay so we have the blackwoods magazine followed by benley's miscellany followed by con hill magazine followed by longmans magazine so we can order it like c d uh i mean c d uh, b and a okay c d b and a c d b a comes as option d so the correct answer is option d now moving to the next question which of these characters figure in samuel beckett's waiting for godo okay samuel beckett's waiting for godo has got a very particular weightage in uh, for this exam for this uh, particular exam because in the morning shift also you got one question here and here you can find two questions from waiting for godo so that's important so we know about samuel beckett he's a postmodern writer and uh, which of these characters uh, which of these characters figure in samuel beckett's waiting for godo So, and we know that the correct answer is option A, estrogen. This is a very direct question because estrogen and Vladimir are the are the central characters in Waiting for Godo. Okay, and another character that um, come here is Poso. Okay, because Poso he is associated with Lucky. So Vladimir and estrogen, Lucky and Poso. So here the correct answer would be estrogen and Poso. That is A and B. A and B comes as option A. now moving to the next question which among the following are examples of consular roman so we know about consular roman that's actually the growth the maturity of an author of of an artist okay so that is what is called as consular roman for example buildings roman that's about any ordinary man who has got this physical spiritual and in uh, f- physical spiritual and mental uh, growth mental development of the central category a central uh, protagonist and if that central protagonist happens to be an artist then the particular novels are known to be consular roman so here you have to identify which of the novels are which of the novels actually belong to consular roman so we know the portrait of a lady david copperfield tom jones and the portrait of the artist as a young man so these are the correct options and here the options are 
A and B, A and C, B and D only and C and D only. So here we know the portrait of the lady, the Copper, David Copperfield, a portrait of the artist as a young man. So the correct answer is option uh, B and option D. Okay, option B and D comes as answer option C. So the correct answer is option C. Now question number 24. Who among the following posits the tradition of great writers as an inescapable fact and takes the ambivalent position of considering it as both a blessing and a curse? Okay, so here it speaks about the tradition of the great writers as an inescapable fact and takes the ambivalent position of considering it as a blessing and as a curse. Okay, and this particular way of thinking or this particular perspective was formulated by Harold Bloom. So, and we know about Harold Bloom, he's a psychoanalytic critic and again we know that this comes under literary theory. So, the correct answer is uh, option C that is Harold Bloom. Moving to the next question, with which of the following movements is Charles Baudelaire's flower of evil generally associated? With which of the following movements is Charles Baudelaire's flowers of evil generally associated? Neoclassical, Symbolist, Modernist and Postmodernist. Okay, so we know about Charles Baudelaire. He is a French writer. He belongs to French literature and therefore European literature. So, uh, we have to identify him and we know that he is generally associated with modern, uh, he is generally associated with uh, two things that is symbolism and modernism. Okay, so the correct answers are option B and option C. Option B and C comes as and option C. So the correct answer is option C. So Charles Baudillard, he is normally associated with symbolism and modernism. Now again another match the following question which is based on English in India because this is about the development of uh, the libraries and institutes in India. Asiatic Society, Dwenyaloga, Konimara Public Library and Bandarkar Oriental Institute. So these are the uh, institutes or the libraries that have been given and the locations Kolkata, Chennai, Mysore and Pune. And if we have a match the following with them, we know that Asiatic Society, it is in Chennai. Okay, Asiatic Society, this is in Chennai. Then we have uh, Dwenyaloga and Dwenyaloga, it uh, stays in Mysore. Okay, Dwenyaloga, it's located in Mysore. Uh, Konemara Public Library, this is associated in, I mean, this is located in Pune. And Bandarkar Oriental Institute, it's, also, it's in Kolkata. So, if you look at the options, it would be um, A2, B3, C4 and D1. And that comes as option B, A2, B3, C4, D1. So, that, so we can say the correct answer is option B. Question number 27, which two of the following are fallacious evaluations of poetry according to Matthew Annan's The Study of Poetry? Which two of the following are fallacious evaluations of poetry according to Matthew Annan's The Study of Poetry? Okay, so you have to, uh, we know about Matthew Annal, the study of poetry. Matthew Annal, he is a Victorian age writer. Therefore, he, this question comes under literary criticism of Victorian age. So, contextual estimate, personal estimate, comparative estimate and historic estimate. So, the correct answer here, the fallacious evaluations of poetry according to Matthew Annal are personal estimate and historic estimate. Personal estimate and historic estimate that comes as options B and D. Option B and D. So, for the correct answer is option C. So, question 28. Which of the following are books written by Noam Chomsky? Recently, we have did a video on Noam Chomsky where I have mentioned about the different works written by Chomsky because this, this should be considered as a direct question because for the previous year, there were many questions asked from the works written by just like the name of the works written by Noam Chomsky. So, here you have to identify the works written by him. So, among the options, we know that syntactic structures, it's a work written by Noam Chomsky. Verbal learning and verbal behavior, no. Language and society, no. Aspects of the theory of syntax, this is another work written by him. The pragmatics of politeness, no. So, the correct answers are option A and D. Option A and D comes as option D. Okay, so option A and D comes as option D. So, the correct answer is answer D. So, Noam Chomsky is very important from net perspective. He's a, we know about him, he's a psychoanalytic writer. So, it's very important because um, 
the way in which his uh, contributions to language acquisitions the universal grammar all are very important while we are preparing for the net so moving to the next question this is another chronological question and these are the works written by uh, i mean these are the works written by indian english writers so here the characters have been given then the works in which they have been appeared are given and you have to identify them in a chronological order so we have pranesh acharya Uh, who appears in samskara written by your anthamurthy shaguni who is a character in mahabharata rusty the room on the roof then gobar um gordon so we know about rusty it's a character created by ruskin born so and we know uh, from the options the first one to appear here would be shaguni because shaguni is a character in mahabharata which has been written in bc so the first character to appear here is shaguni followed by gobar okay gobar who appears in gordon and then which is followed by rusty that is the room on the roof uh, sorry i uh, yeah rusty the room on the roof and then which is followed by pranesh acharya so if you look at the correct options and the answers uh, correct i mean if you look at them in chronological shaguni followed by gobar followed by rusty followed by pranesh acharya so the correct answer would be option d that is b d c and a so the correct answer is answer d now question number 30 which of these themes best sums up the pre preoccupation of most of vijay tendulkar plays again another question from indian english literature so indian english literature has got some weightage in this exam so you you have to identify the themes of the works of vijay tendulkar so we know about vijay tendulkar the very famous indian playwright so which are the important themes that you could find in his works uh dynamics of media no motivations of crime no workings of love triangles again no workings of power that's one of the important theme that you can find in the works of vijay tendulkar the workings of power so the correct answer is option d again another chronological question arrange the following terms in the chronological order as these appeared in literary theory phallocentrism locutionary act interpolation and interpretive community so uh, the videos in which we have discussed about the chronological questions i have said that if you face any such questions what you have to do is that first place them to the genre or the context or the literary theory in which they belong and then arrange that theories in a chronological order so you would get the correct answer so here you have to identify the theory at first and then you have to figure out the meaning okay so here the correct order would be the first one to first one to have appeared here would be locutionary act so that would be the first one locutionary act followed by interpolation followed by interpolation of louis althusser and then followed by phallocentrism and finally interpretive community okay so these are the, the uh, these are the chronological order in which they appear b c a and d that comes as option b so the correct answer is option b now coming to the next question who is the creator of the character julian sorrel who is the creator of the character julian sorrel so the correct answer is stendel so stendel the french writer he is the character he is the creator of the character called julian sorrel so the correct answer is option d now coming to another match the following question where you have given the name of the plays and of the playwrights and you have to identify it and if you look at this as a whole you can figure out that all these belongs to post colonial literature madman and specialist the sea at dolphin the trial of deren kimathi and echo in the born and if we correctly match them with the playwrights dennis scott wool zoinga derrick walcott googie wationgo we can say that madman and specialist it's a play written by wally soinka then the c h dolphin it's written by derrick walcott the trial of deden kimathi it is written by googi wa tiongo and echo in the bond written by dennis scott so a2 b3 c4 and d1 and uh, that comes as option b so the correct answer is option b so the post colonial plays and the post colonial writers where you have to match them now coming to the next question this is again another question from indian english literature who is the author of the truth about me a hijra life society who is the author of the truth about me a hijra life society 
A. Revadi, Bama, Mukta, Sarvagod and V. Gida. A. Revadi, Bama, Mukta, Sarvagod and V. Gida. So, uh, me, A. Hijra life story, it is written by A. Revadi. So, it's a work written by A. Revadi. So, the correct answer is option A. Now, coming to the next question. Given below are two statements. Statement 1. A pigeon is formed by two mutually unintelligible speech communities trying to communicate using the most obvious features of each other's language. This is again a language based question and you can answer it if you know about what a pigeon is. You might have heard about pigeon and Cree also. That is the question. Notwithstanding the number of years a pigeon is spoken, it can never become the mother tongue of a community. So here you have to identify which of the statements are true. So here the thing is that the statement what? That is a pigeon is formed by two mutually unintelligible speech communities trying to communicate using the most obvious features of each other's language. That is what is called as pigeon. So statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect. Okay, so if you look at the options we can find that yeah, statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect. So the correct answer is option C. Now coming to the next question. Who is the author of the otherness of English, India's anti-tongue syndrome? Who is the author of the otherness of English, India's anti-tongue syndrome? Bino K. John, Yamuna Kashru, Prabal Dasgupta and S.K. Varma. So, English, India's anti-tongue syndrome is written by Prabal Dasgupta. So, the correct answer is option C, Prabal Dasgupta. So, question number 37, another chronological question where you have to identify the uh, movements, the different literary movements uh, in a chronological order. So, the first thing you have to do is that arrange them with the, I mean, uh, associate them with the ages in which they appear. For example, if we know about the late poets, they appear in the romantic period, then it would be very easy for you to uh, figure it out in a chronological order. So, here the first uh, group of poets who would appear here would be the Cavalier poets and the Cavalier poets followed by the Lake poets followed by the Images poet and finally by the Movement poet. So, if you look at the options B, D, A and C. B, D, A and C comes as option uh, A. So, the correct answer is option A. So, now coming to the next question about Franz Fanon. So, Franz Fanon, he belongs to post-colonial literature. Which of the following statements uh, best articulates Franz Fanon's political position? Colonialism will die a natural death since any violent struggle against it? No. Peasants and social outcasts have little revolutionary potential in Africa? No. Social oppression in the third world is a matter more of race than of a class? No. The African bourgeois can never succeed in the task of nation buildings. That can be considered to be the correct Franz Fanon's political position. So, the correct answer is option D. Okay, so that's the correct answer. Now coming to question 39, this is a question from John Milton. So we know about John Milton who is a writer in the Civil War and Interregnum period. And if we speak about Milton and his Paradise Laws, you, 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 you can get a large number of questions from the previous year questions asked from John Milton. So here this is another question. This was not asked previously, just the uh, topic, I mean just the Paradise Laws. In which book of Paradise Lost does Milton refer to Agra and Lahore of Great Mughal? Agra and Lahore of Great Mughal and that appears in book 11. So, so it, it is in book 11 that he makes the reference to Agra and Lahore of Great Mughal. That is in this book he refers to the Indian culture. So the correct answer is option D that is in book 11. Now, next question. What was the center set up for studying culture at the University of Birmingham called? So, this is a question from cultural studies. So, you know that cultural studies, it was always there in the syllabus, but it was given extra privilege when added to be the another module by NTA New, NTA Net from December 2018. So, ever that there were uh, questions from cultural studies, but there were also certain exams where you cannot expect any uh, particular questions from cultural studies. But anyway, in this shift or I mean in the morning and the afternoon shift, you can, you got, really got much questions from cultural studies. 
So this is about what was the center, center for studying culture at the University of Birmingham called Center for Contemporary Cultural Studies, Center for Contemporary Studies, Center for Cultural Studies and Center for New Cultural Studies. The correct answer is option A, Center for Contemporary Cultural Studies. So the correct answer is option A. Now, this is another research methodology question. Which of the following abbreviations refers to a documentation style? Aerial, MFS, MHRA, PMLA. So, the correct answer is option C, MHRA. So, that is the uh, abbreviation refers to a documentation style. The correct answer is option C, MHRA. Now, question number 42, another question from cultural studies. Which of the following is true of mass media? It usually has a central single source. It can affect a localized population only. It usually has multiple sources. Its audience is in close proximity to its source. So the correct answer regarding mass media is it usually has a central single source. So that is the correct answer regarding mass media. It usually has a central single source. Now question number 43. Given below are two statements. Statement 1. The opening and closing lines of Waiting for Godo are spoken by estrogen. Statement 2. Towards the end of the play Waiting for Godo, estrogen echoes Poso's statement. They give birth astride of a grave. So here, uh, this is the second question that's asked from Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godo. You have, uh, you, I mean, you go to know about another question that was asked for this shift. And there was also another statement question that was asked from Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godo in the morning shift. If you look at the video, you can get the question. So here you have to identify which of the two statements are right. So here we know that statement 1, the opening and closing lines of waiting for Godo are spoken by estrogen. That's a correct statement. Statement 2, towards the end of the play waiting for Godo, estrogen echoes Poso's statement, they give birth astride of a grave. That's a wrong statement. So we can say that statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect. Statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect. It appears in option D. So the correct answer is option D. Now, question number 44. How does T.S. Eliot sum up the peculiar quality of Marvel's Horatian Ode? How does T.S. Eliot sum up the peculiar quality of Marvel's Horatian Ode? And we know about T.S. Eliot. He has written a large number of critical works. So, this question comes under literary criticism because this is a question regarding T.S. Eliot's criticism on metaphysical poets. So, here let's look at the correct answer. A contrast of ideas different in degree but the same in principle? No. A tough reasonableness beneath a slight lyric grace. That's one of the correct statement. Heterogeneity of materials compelled into unity? No. Telescoping of images and multiplied associations? No. So, we can say that among here the correct statement would be option B. Okay. A tough reasonableness beneath a slight uh, lyric grace. So, the correct answer is option B. Now, question number 45. Usage in you have his the mystery lectures is an example of. Usage in you have his the mystery lectures is an example of. As I said earlier, the topic of literary devices that was removed by NTA from December 2018. But you can, you can find uh, questions asked from the principal. So, even if you look at the syllabus, you always have to expect uh, two or three questions that are asked from out of syllabus. Error of lexical choice, inadvertent mistake, meta thesis, and spoonerism. So the correct answer is spoonerism. You have his the mystery lectures. That is actually an example of spoonerism. So the correct answer is option D, spoonerism. Now, 46. Which of the following fictional characters is believed to be based on the 15th century real life character Vlad the Impaler? So we all know about Vlad the Impaler, and he that was the first name of Dracula. Okay, so Count Dracula uh, written by, uh, I mean Count Dracula, the novel written by Bram Stoker. It's considered to be a postmodern age uh, work and that is basically believed to be Vlad the Impaler. Okay, so I think anyone who have watched the movie, anyone who have read the novel for them, it would be a direct question. So the correct answer is option A, Count Dracula. Now 47. Who among the following says that ideology is a representation of the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence? 
who among the following says that ideology is a representation of the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence. So the correct answer, this is actually given by Louis Althusser and we know about Louis Althusser, he is a Marxist philosopher. So he is the one who gave this uh, sort of definition to ideology, a representation of the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence. So the correct answer is option C, Louis Althusser. Now next is a match the following question asked from different branches. So here they you have uh, you have given the names of the writers and the books where so you have to match them. Homi Baba, T. S. Eliot, Roland Barthes, and John Frisk. The books are Reading the Popular, The Location of the Culture, Notes Towards the Definition of Culture, Image, Music, and Text. So if you look at the correct options, you can find that Homi Baba uh, is the author of The Location of Culture, Roland Barthes. Is the uh, Roland Barthes is the sorry T. S. Eliot is the author of Notes Towards a Definition of Culture, Roland Barthes Image Music Test, and John Frisk Reading the Popular. So again, the options are A two, B three, C four, and D one, and that comes as option B. Okay, so the correct answer is option B. Now another match the following where you are uh, asked to write the poem, and you have to identify the poem to the poet and it, it wouldn't be that hard because most of the poems are really very uh, familiar especially the rod not taken or tonight I can write the saddest line so we know from the options we know that the the rod not taken it is written by Robert Frost the tonight I can write the saddest line is a very beautiful poem written by Pablo Neruda I hear America singing is written by Walt Whitman that's also a very famous poem it's an elegy on Abraham Lincoln I too sing America, it's written by Langston Hughes. So, uh, A2, B1, C4 and D3. That comes as option B. So, the correct answer is option B. Now, coming to question number 50. Which two of the following are the earliest colonial publishing initiatives that apply to India? Which two of the following are the earliest colonial publishing initiatives that apply to India? Andrew Lang Colonial Book Series, Murray Colonial and Home Library Series, Colonial Library Series by Macmillan, Colonial Library Series by Chateau and Windows. So here, uh, this actually is a post-colonial uh, area and the correct answer here would be that means the uh, earliest colonial publishing initiatives that can be applied to India are Murray Colonial and Home Library Series, Murray Colonial Home Library Series, Colonial Library Series by Macmillan. So these two would be the correct answers that is option B and C that comes as option C. So the correct answer to this question is option C. Now coming to the next question, arrange the following in their chronological order. English re so this is basically an English in India question and you can you have to identify the diff so these are all the different events that happen in relation to the use of English or in relation to the evolution of English in India so you have to identify the events in their correct chronological order so here we have English replaces Persian as official language of the company arrival of Charles Grant in India Universities established in Calcutta, Bombay and Madras, construction of Fort William in Calcutta. So the first thing that happened, the first event that happened among the four is the uh, construction of Fort William in Calcutta. So the option D, that's the first thing that happened and which was followed by arrival of Charles Grant in India. And after that, uh, we can say, I mean, after that, we can say that English replaces Persian as the official language of the company and finally universities established in Calcutta, Bombay and Madra. So these are the correct options D, B, A and C which comes as option C. So the correct answer is option C. Now coming to the next question, who wrote the short story The Water? Who wrote the short story The Water? Chimamanda Negoshi Adiche. Chinu Achibe, Gugi Wa Tiongo, Wal Soinga. Chimananda Negoshi Adiche, Chinu Achibe, Gugi Wa Tiongo, and Wal Soinga. You have to identify the writer of the short story, The Water. The Water is a short story written by Chinu Achibe, the African writer. So the correct answer is option B, Chinu Achibe. 
okay again another statement question given below are two statements statement one all research being original and uninspired it is rare for a researcher to begin a project by deriving ideas from the predecessors all research being original and uninspired it is rare for a researcher to begin a project by deriving ideas from the predecessor statement 2 studying and documenting past work on a research topic stifles the continual expansion of human knowledge so here we uh, this is actually a question based on research methodology and uh, it's very clear from both the statements that both of them are incorrect statement 1 and statement 2 both of them are incorrect so the correct answer is option b statement 1 and statement 2 are incorrect now coming to the next question who wrote a postmodern reworking of charles dickens great expectation without altering the original title who wrote a postmodern reworking so this is a question based on the victorian age writer that is charles dickens and the postmodern age writer that is kathy acker because it is kathy acker who reworked on charles dickens great Expect expectation without re altering the title the title is same so the correct answer is option b kathy acker now coming to question number 55 which of these is identified by ariel doffman and armand matterlard as having been deployed in walt disney comic books to propagate imperialist ideas so you can find a similar question in the morning shift regarding walt uh, i mean regarding walt disney so you have to identify the correct answer defecation impoverishment infant in sorry infantilization and personification so the correct answer is option c that is infantilization now again and the match the following question text advancement of learning other uh, advancement of learning past and present english traits illness and metaphor susan sontag francis bacon thomas carril and r w ralph waldo emerson so uh, you have to have this in your mind ever since they have added this module called short stories and non fiction there were many questions that were asked from non fiction and also from short stories which was not that a uh, familiar concept before this revision of the syllabus so while you are reading through all the works written by all the writers for your indian net exam also go for the non fiction non fiction works that they have written so we have advancement of learning we know it's a work written by francis bacon and then we have um, past and the present written by thomas carril english traits written by r w emerson and illness as metaphor written by susan sontag so a2 b3 sorry a2 b3 c4 and d1 and that comes as option b a2 d3 c4 and d1 so that comes as option b now next question another chronological question where you have to identify the text in the terms of the years in which they have published so this is again a direct question just if you can place the writers with their respective ages you can answer this question edmund spencer the fairy queen he belongs to the elizabethan age then we have coleridge and wordsworth of the romantic age then we have pablo neruda and finally charles baudelaire the french writer and if we have to arrange them in a chronological order we know the first work to appear here is edmund spencer's the fairy queen and next one is coleridge and wordsworth lyrical ballads which was published in 1798 and then we have charles baudelaire's the flower of evil the modern age work and finally pablo neruda's canto general so the correct answer would be uh, order would be a b d and c a b d and c comes as option b so the correct answer is option b now next question which of the following are true of the dramatic legacy of ben jonson which of the following are true of the dramatic legacy of ben jonson we know about ben jonson an elizabethan and jacobin age writer and we know about the uh, the the contributions of jonson regarding the comedy of humors the mask etc so this is regarding it jonson's physiological interpretation of character and personality did not have any precedent that that's not, that cannot be considered to be true taking after the practice of the moralities and interludes johnson named his dramatics dramatist personae apteronically that's one right statement regarding him so we can say that option b is right chapman's all fools and middleton said trick to catch the old one belong to the genre of comedy of humors that johnson is said to have pioneered that is also 
uh, regarding them that can also be considered john marston and thomas decker collaborated with johnson in writing for a children's company of players so here these are the options that's given here and we know that the correct answers are option b and c that is regarding the um, morality and interludes and chapman's works regarding the comedy of humor so the correct answer is option b and c now coming to an assertion reason question given below are two statements one is labeled as assertion a and the other is labeled as reason r as i have already said while you are answering this question there are certain things that you have to look i mean you at first you have to look whether both these statements are right then you have to look whether the reason is appropriate enough to um, justify this assertion so let's look at this statement the implied reader shifts attention from the real reading individual to a disembodied dimension of reception intricately interwoven into the text the dear reader involved in the realist novels is a fictional representation of the distant reader so both of them they belong to this reader response theory and about the way in which the role of the reader actually works in such a theory so we we have to say that option a that is the implied reader uh, shifts attention from the real reading individual to a disembodied dimension of reception intricately interwoven into the text that's a right statement but the dear reader invoked in the realist novel is a fictional representation of the distant reader that statement is incorrect so we can say that a is correct but r is incorrect and that comes as option a so the correct answer is option a now coming to question 60 who wrote the labyrinth of solitude gabriel garcia marquez gabriela mistral george luis bocho and octavia paz so uh, the correct answer that means the author of the labyrinth of solitude is octavio paz so he is a uh, mexican poet and a diplomat so the correct answer is octavio paz that is option d so the correct answer is option d octavio paz Now coming to the next question arrange the following terms in their chronological sequence of association so again as i said if you have to look at it you have to associate them with their respective context or the genres and then you have to arrange that context or genre with, with the correct uh, in the correct chronological order so we are we have dissociation of sensibility and reliable narrator theater of cruelty and egoistical sublime so the first one to appear here is egoistical sublime because that's a romantic age that's by keats so it's a romantic age work uh, then we have no, sorry egoistical sublime it's a romantic age so that's a first one to appear followed by dissociation of sensibility dissociation of sensibility that is one thing that's uh, propagated by t s eliot and then uh, we have the theater of cruelty that's almost to the modern post modern age and finally unreliable narrator which is a result of this post modern literature so we can say that the correct order in which they have to be appear is d a c and b so d a c and b comes as option c so the correct answer is option c now coming to the next question which character in hamlet utters the line something is rotten in the state of denmark this statement is important because everything in this particular play is related to the statement it's related to this statement and this is the first statement in hamlet because uh, because it speaks about how rotten that denmark has become compared to the uh, compared to the age in which king hamlet ruled and this statement is actually given by marcellus to horatio so the correct answer is option d marcellus Now coming to the next question who is the author of radiant textuality who is the author of radiant textuality jerome magan gerald graf james thorpe and richard d altick jerome magan gerald graf james thorpe and richard d altick radiant textuality it is written by jerome magan he is an american scholar and he is the author of radiant textuality so the correct answer is option a jerome magan which two of the which two are the works of ted hughes so we knew about ted hughes he is a nobel prize winner wild track woodwo lupercal and jack straw's castle so this is a question related to post modernism where you have to identify the works written by ted hughes and we know about 
uh, Ted Hughes, how he used animal symbolism. So uh, technically, this can be considered to be a very direct question. So the two works written by Ted Hughes are Wardwo and Lopakel. So these are the two works that is option B and C that comes as option C. So the correct answer is option C. Now coming to the next question, which book by J.G. Ballard is about a virus that freezes anything it comes in contact with? So this is a science fiction novel and the work is written by J.G. Ballard and you have to identify the work. So J.G. Ballard is an English novelist who appears in the postmodern period and um, if you look at the options, that is Concrete Island, Kingdom Comb, The Crystal World, The Drowned World. The Drowned World is actually a very famous work written by J.G. Ballard and we can say that he is actually the uh, first who became associated with the new wave of science fiction for his uh, post-apocalyptic approach, especially in his work, The Drowned World. But here the correct answer is option C, The Crystal World, okay, because the freezes anything the word crystal it can be associated so the correct answer is option c now coming to the next question which of these departments did the woods dispatch of 1854 recommend setting up the university so again another english in india question regarding the woods dispatch of 1854 so here the question is recommend setting up in the universities arabic english french and law so we know that English is a uh, correct answer and apart from that is except French all the other languages have been taken here that is Arabic, English and law was considered to be setting up in the university. So the correct answer is option A that is A, B and D Arabic, English and law. Now coming to another question, this is regarding uh, Indian, I mean this actually belongs to Indian English literature because Urvashi Butalia, she is an Indian feminist scholar and a writer. So which of the following does Urvashi Butalia's The Other Side of Silence primarily seek to do? To understand the partition as something more than a political divide, that's a correct statement. To foreground a personal history of the partition, that's also a right statement. To foreground the partition as an even more tragic than the Holocaust, no. To find and unite families separated at the partition, no. So we can say that A and B are the uh, correct uh, areas or the correct uh, things that she wanted to address in her work, the other side of silence. So the correct answer is option A, that is A and B only. Now coming to the next work, uh, next question, this uh, you have given the num uh, number name of the authors and the text and you have to identify it. Again, this is a mixing up of these genres and the modules because if you look at um, the different works, there is a problem play at the same time there is a poem etc. And you have to identify the authors and the text. So, Robert Browning, S.T. Coleridge, A.W. Pinero, Alfred Tennyson and William Wordsworth, Queen Mary the Second, Mrs. Tancory, Remorse, The Borders and Stratford. Okay, so these are the correct options. So, you have to identify it. We know that Robert Browning, he is the author of Stratford. It's a problem play, Robert Browning and Stratford. And then... Um, we have uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge who is the author of his play that is Remorse. Okay, so uh, normally this question is regarding the area in which uh, the problem plays of the writers who are not that famous playwrights. Then we have A.W. Pinero and A.W. Pinero is known for the second Mrs. Tancore. And then we have Alfred Tennyson who is known for Queen Mary and William Wordsworth who is actually known for his work The uh, the Borders, which is his only play written by William Wordsworth. So, that is the correct option. So, if you put them in order, we can say that A can be connected with 5, B can be connected with 3, C 2, D 1 and E 4. And that comes as option D. So, the correct answer is option D. Now, who in the world as India argues that English can be the only common unifying language of India? Here, the correct answer is given by Susan Sontag. Okay, so this is regarding post-colonial, uh, I mean this is regarding the post-colonial literature which, which of the following writers believe that English can be the only common unifying language of India. The, it's actually given, I mean the statement is actually given by Susan Sontag. So the correct answer is option D. Now next question, which of the following qualify for the label cultural intermediary in the context of a commercial film? Which of the following qualify for the label 
cultural intermediary so cultural intermediary uh, commercial film all these again comes under popular culture that is cultural studies and you have to identify the uh, I mean, you have to identify the culture who is ca who can be labeled as cultural intermediary in the context of a commercial film. Okay, so the film magazine columnist that's correct. The director, the fans club that's also correct. The producer, no. So the correct answer or the people related to uh, movies who can be labeled as the cultural intermediary are the film magazine columnist and the fan club so they are the people they are the ones who are who are connected or who actually connects the culture uh, i mean who actually connect, connects the movie with the people so that they are the culture intermediary a and c a and c comes as option a so question 71 who among these are songwriters who have been awarded the nobel prize for literature so here the correct answer are Rabindranath Tagore who won the Nobel Prize in 1913 and Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2016 for his uh, new poetic expression, for bringing out new poetic expressions in song tradition. So the correct answers are option B and C. So that appears in option C. So the correct answer is option C. Now, question number 72, arrange the following poems by W.B. Eads in the chronological order of the publication. So, here, you this is much more a very precise chronological question where you have to identify the poems with the years or dates, of, dates and the years of the publication of a particular author. So, it would be really difficult. The Wild Swans at Cooley. The second coming among school children and Adam's curse, but it wouldn't be that hard. Why? Because if you if you while you are preparing, if you look at all the works of the writers in their chronological order, then something would register in your mind which would actually make it easy to answer. Okay. Anyway, let's look at the correct order in which they appear. The first one, the first poem written by W. Beats among here is Adam's curse. Okay. So the first work is Adam's curse. Followed by the wild swans at Cooley, uh, followed by the second coming and among school children. So, D, A, B and C. D, A, B, C appears as option D. So, the correct answer is option D. Now, coming to the next question, which of these are generally taken to be true of cultural studies? Another question from cultural studies and that is, um, it is politically engaged. That's a very right statement. It privileges text over context. That is not right. It has a symbiotic relationship with formalism. No. It uh, studies the measures of production of a text. That is correct statement. So we can say that A and D are the correct statement regarding cultural studies. And A and D appears as option B. So the correct answer is option B. Now coming to the next question, another chronological order question. So this is why this is why I am repeatedly telling you to look at the things in a chronological order because you can answer more than 10 or 11 questions if you have that sense in you. So choose the right chronological sequence of the following books. Arindadi Roy, The God of Small Things, Kiran Deshai, The Inheritance of Lows, Shashi Deshpande, That Long Silence and Jumba Lahiri is the namesake okay so you have to identify here and the correct and the first work that appears among here is shashi deshpande that long silence shashi deshpande is that long silence followed by arindadi royce the god of small things and then followed by kiran deshais the inheritance of lows and jumba lahiri is the namesake okay so that would be the correct order that is c a d and b C A D uh, C A D and B and that would be option C. Okay, so option C, C A D and B. Now coming to the next question. According to Ferdinand de Zashur, language is okay. So again, you can another question from Zashur. So for years you have been uh, getting questions from Zashur. He's a very famous structuralist and therefore uh, he is someone who can be considered to be the father of English uh, linguistics or father of the modern linguistics. So he is very important when it comes to structuralism and also from a net point of view and you have to identify the correct definition of language according to Zashur. Okay, so here an interlocking structure, that's a correct statement. And then a system of constant change, no, a system of signs, that's right, because sign is equal to signifier plus signifier. So according to him, language is actually a system of signs. A self-standing formation, no. So we can say that according to Ferdinand de Zosho, language is an interlocking structure and a system of signs. So A and C only. So the correct answer is option B. 
Now coming to the next question. Words with the same pronunciation and different meanings are. Okay, another language based question. Homonyms, homographs, homoglobes and homophones. So the correct answer is homophones. Words with the same pronunciation and different meanings. For example, banks like the central bank and the river bank. It's like the same pronunciation uh, and uh, different meaning. So that is considered to be homophones. Now, 77, he said the, the set of inflicted forms taken by a single word. The set of inflicted forms taken by a single word that is lexeme. Okay, those, this comes as a part of language and pedagogy about the language studies. The inflicted forms taken by a single word is called as lexeme. Now, moving to the next question, which of the following narrative cycles is referred to in Michel Foucault's What is an Author? So, we know about Michel Foucault, he is a postmodern theorist and a philosopher. So, in his What is an Author, he refers to the narrative cycle of the Thousand and One Nights. Okay, the Arabian Nights, that is the Thousand and One Nights. So, the correct answer is option C, the Thousand and One Nights, because that is the work that is referred by Michel Foucault in his work What is an Author? The correct answer is option C. Now, another match the following question where you have to identify the novel with its writer. A handful of dust, Brinkton Rock, Howard's End, The Plum Serpent and Those Barren Leaves. And the writers are E.M. Foster, Evelyn Vogue, D.H. Lawrence, Aldous Huxley and Graham Green. Okay, so you have to identify the novels with their respective writers. So, we know that um, A Handful of Dust, it is written by Evelyn Vogue. Okay, Handful of Dust because the title is taken from, uh, T associated with T.S. Eliot. So, Handful of Dust, Evelyn Vogue. Handful of Dust, Evelyn Vogue. And then we have Brinkton Rock, written by Graham Green. And then we have Howard's uh, End, written by E.M. Foster. The Plume Serpent, uh, written by D.H. Lawrence. And Those Barren Leaves, written by Aldous Huxley. So, if you look at the correct order, it would be like A2, B5, C1, D3 and E4. And that comes as option B. A2, B5, C1, D3 and E4. So, the correct answer is option B. Now, another statement question. Given below are two statements. Uh, that is, uh, language is not a reliable tool of communication says deconstruction but argues in favor of a theory of sign as a self-sufficient union of signifier and the signified. Okay, so this is a statement question regarding the philosophy of deconstruction. You, If you know about the principles and the uh, ideology of deconstruction, you would be able to answer this question. And from the very statement, it's very clear that the statement one is incorrect regarding deconstruction. Statement 2, deconstruction claims that language is non-referential since it refers neither to the things in the world nor to our concepts of things but only to the play of signifiers. That's a correct statement. So, we can say that statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is correct. And uh, that comes as option D. So, the correct answer is option D. Now, coming to the next question, which Shakespearean comedy is structured as a play within a play? Okay, so here this is considered to be one question that you can actually challenge. But uh, there were many doubts regarding that. Regarding that, uh, the correct answer given by NTA UGC Net is the taming of the shrew. And many of the students have said that that's a wrong statement. The correct answer is Midsummer Night's Dream. But you have to understand that taming of the shrew is also a very perfect example of play within a play because this is actually the question is which Shakespearean comedy is structured as a play within a play okay the question is not which Shakespearean comedy has play within a play in it but the question is which Shakespearean comedy is structured as a play within a play okay here we know that the taming of the shrew this is actually uh, the story of Catherine Beandries etc the story is actually a play performed to a person who is actually tricked to be a nobleman. Okay, he got drunk and he is tricked by, uh, by his uh, fellow people uh, to be a nobleman and they perform a play called The Taming of Shrew to them. Okay, so here we can say that the entire play, that is The Taming of Shrew, it is structured as a play within a play. But A Midsummer Night's Dream, 
it has got play within a play in it okay because the uh, the characters called the uh, nick bottom etc the nick bottom robin etc they perform a play called uh, tiravis and pismi okay uh, pismi and tiramis uh, as a part of a play or as a play within the play in, and they perform it before the duke okay before the uh, before the duke so this has got play within the play but this is structured as a play within the play so we have to say that the answer d that is the taming of the shrew is also a correct answer I, or we have to say that the taming of the shrew that is a right answer there were many confusions regarding this question so the correct answer is option d now who among the following was of the view that poetry was only an imitation of an imitation and therefore not trivial so we know that the correct answer here is plato plato is a greek critic therefore this comes under literary criticism and we know that plato he banished poets from his republic and plato considered poetry to be an imitation of an imitation okay twice removed from reality and therefore it is corrupt so the correct answer is option c that is plato now question number 83 in the function of criticism at the present time what is proposed by matthew annald as the essence of criticism okay so here the this actually comes under literary criticism so you have to identify what is regarded by matthew annald as the essence of criticism that is disinterestedness okay so that is the correct answer disinterestedness that is regarded to be the uh, correct or the essence of criticism according to matthew annald you have to be objective now question 84 this is a research methodology question and you would get the answer if you have got this idea about this mla format the mla style sheet a compilation of scholarly conventions and directives was first published in the mla style sheet a compilation of scholarly conventions and directive was first published in it was first published in 1951 so the correct answer is option a 1951 now Which two of the following essays form part of Mikhail Bakhtin's The Dialogic Imagination Four Essays? So, uh, the in our previous videos we have discussed about Mikhail Bakhtin and the concept of dialogism of Bakhtin. So, if you have watched this video, you would get the answer. Which two of the following essays form part of his Mikhail Bakhtin's The Dialogic Imagination and Four Essays? from the history of novelist discourse discourse in the novel romance and novel forms of time and the chronotope of the novel so here discourse in the novel and forms of time and the chronotope in the novel these are the two things that two uh, essays that forms as a part of the dialogic imagination four essays so the correct answer is b and d and that comes as option d so the correct answer is answer d Okay, which part pair of linguist in the following list is associated with speech acts? Okay, which pair of linguist is associated with the speech acts? Franz Boas and Radolf Kanab no, J L Austin and John Searle. That's the right answer because both of them they are linguist and they are associated with the speech acts. So we have to say that Austin and Searle they are the correct answer. Answer that is option B. The correct answer is option B. now another question regarding cultural studies which of these are true of raymond williams culture and society okay which of these are true regarding raymond williams culture and society it critics the idea of high culture that's a very right statement uh, so option a is right it overlooks the idea of high culture no it defines culture as a way of life that's the clear cut definition of culture and society it equates culture with science no so the correct answers are option a and c option a and c appears as option a so the correct answer is option a now another match the following question where you are given the books and uh, then you have given the poets and if you look at the poets you would be clear that these all are the poets who belong to the metaphysical poets okay so who are called as the metaphysical poets so we have anniversaries the temple the rehearsal transposed and pindak odds okay so these are the works and if you arrange them we have a anniversaries is written by john dun anniversaries is written by john dun the temple is written by george herbert 
the rehearsal transposed is written by Andrew Marvel and Pintak Oats are written by Abram Cowley. So we have A2, B3, C4 and D1 and that comes as option B. Okay, so that comes as option B. Now, again another question from Metaphysical Poets by Samuel Johnson. Uh, we know that Samuel Johnson, he has uh, written an essay regarding the life and the writings of metaphysical poets. So, this is a question belongs to literary criticism by Samuel Johnson. In the life of Colley, which two of the following criticism were made by Samuel Johnson against a group of writers he termed as the metaphysical poets? They made an inappropriate combination of wit and imagination. No. Instead of writing poetry, they only wrote verses. That is right according to Samuel Johnson. And then they neither copied nature nor life. That's also right. They never tried to be singular in their thoughts. No. So we can say that B and C. That is the correct option. So B and C comes as option B. Now, next question. Which two among the following condemn the transportation of 5,000, sorry, 50,000 slaves into England in 1771. Which two among the following condemned the transportation of the slaves in England? Samuel Johnson, Alexander Pope, Horace Walpole and Thomas Gray. So, here the correct answer are, uh, we know, uh, we know, I mean, correct answers are Samuel Johnson and Horace Walpole, Enlightenment Age Critic and Horace Walpole, a Romantic Age Writer. So, Samuel Johnson and Horace Walpole, they are the one who condemned the transportation of 50,000 slaves into England in 1771. So, the correct answer is option B, A and C, that is Samuel Johnson and Horace Walpole. Now, let's uh, look at the next 10 sets of questions. So, these are the questions that were asked as paragraph questions. So, you would be given 4 extracts. Okay, uh, 4 extracts and uh, from these 4 extracts, you have to answer the 10 questions. Some of these questions are directly asked from the passage, but for some, you have to have a clear-cut idea about the novel or the work in which that particular extract appears. Okay, so uh, this is the first essay given uh, by here and if you want to read the passage, just pause the video and uh, read the entire one if, before answering the question. Okay, so let's look at the question. So, this is actually an extract taken from uh, Mondain's essay of solitude. So, the question is, the principal worries of our life follows us if we, so this is also a direct question, there are two answers, detach ourselves from family life, are deep into buying and selling, mentally abstain from hassle and bustle, are into schools of philosophy. So, if you have read the passage, you can answer the question. So, these are the options. Okay, so among here, B and D are the correct statement. That is, are deep into buying and selling, are into schools of philosophy. So, the correct answer is option C. Now, question 92, which of the following best captures the theme of the passage? Ruling a state is easier than managing a family. Solitude is one condition of peace with oneself. The court and the marketplace must be got rid of. Try what one may, no one can ever be in ease. So, the best theme that is that if you have read the passage, you would know that try what one may, no one can ever be at ease. Okay, so that is the correct theme of the passage. Moving on to the another question asked from there. The mistake human beings make is to abjure solitude when desirable, abstain from restraining the mind, abstain from the love of leisure, exaggerate the value of family. The correct answer is option B, abstain from restraining the mind. Now, the next extract is a poem written by W.B. Eats, A Prayer for Old Age. God guard me from those thoughts men think. So, uh, read this poem and then you can answer the upcoming questions. Thoughts true for all time are? The correct answer is born of God's care. Okay, born of God's, uh, sorry, the options are born of God's care, felt deep inside the self for all human hearts and imbued with logic of mind. The correct answer is the thoughts true for all time are felt deep inside the self. If you read the passage, if you read the poem, you will get this answer. Now, in the second stanza, the poet thinks of 
what all earns all others praise no what all makes a wise old man what he does not want to appear so this is the right statement that is option 3 and what he thinks he is a fool so the correct answer is answer C now which of the following best captures what we infer about the poet he believes in the efficacy of prayer he is a foolish young man who thinks wisely he is an old man wise as old uh, wise as older and he is old but happy in not being wise okay so the correct answer is option d he is old but happy in not being wise okay we, we, we know about wb it's his concept of wise and why he felt that his land is not perfect for the all people to live okay so that is the thing option d now uh, there is another S, I mean, another exact which is taken from a novel written by charles dickens that is dompey and the son so in uh, in order to answer this questions answer the questions that are asked from this extract it would be better if you could if you know about the work the characters or what happens in this dombi and son okay so here uh, the question i mean the first question regarding this uh, passage that is uh, dombi and the son is regarding the statement that to preserve inviolate a system of which they were the center so you have to identify that what is the system of which dombey and the sun were the center and if you want to understand that the correct answer is the country's commerce but if you want to uh, answer this question you have to have an idea about what these dombey and the sun novel revolves around so the correct answer is anyway the country's commerce that is option b so the correct answer is option b now the whole description is an example of analogy aporia image and sarcasm the correct answer is sarcasm okay so option d now another passage which is taken from shakespeare's king lear in the morning shift it was from tempest and in the afternoon shift it is from king lear and again uh, in the afternoon shift it was from charles dickens uh, dompey and the sun and the first one the morning shift it was from thomas hardy's tales of the bobble so that's why i said the question distribution is almost same but on different levels Okay, so this is from Shakespeare and the King Lear. Which of the following best captures what Shakespeare means? The correct answer is animals unlike man are more complex. Then final question is man no more than this means. So the correct answer is man is not as well endowed as some other animals. So the correct answer is option D. So these are the questions that were asked for the afternoon shift of india ugc net december and june 2021 cycle and uh, we were discussing about the uh, provincial answers and in the upcoming videos we will be dealing with the questions in different forms in different formats uh, we will be dealing with the chronological questions etc but uh, like if you are preparing for your ne ne next nta exam have this in your mind have a chronological order give extra focus to the non fiction works even if you look at all the works of the writers like uh, in, in anyway if you look at the works the if you look at the works of the uh, fi the writers who are known for the fiction works like T.S. Eliot or uh, Matthew Arnold or Samuel Johnson also have an equal concentration on their non fiction works because non fiction and short stories cultural studies all this has got immense uh, weightage for this exam so that's all about this video thank you